Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right. Well, first of all, I'd like to uh, wish the fathers all a happy Father's Day this morning and uh, welcome to the service this morning. And also, we do have a gift for the uh, men of our church for Father's Day, so just make sure on your way out that you grab one of the gifts that they have ready for you. Also, uh, <clears throat> we have the nursery available from newborns to two years old. We have classes for toddlers up to fifth grade during the church service, and they'll be dismissed after the hug time and the song. And then also, you got to remember that we got the video cameras at the powerhouse that are on the TV in the back area if you'd like to check on your kids. And also, just a reminder, uh, there's an offering box in back hanging up in red and one up here at the front right there as well if you want to use that side door to go out this morning. And uh, Lori wanted to speak, but I don't think she's here right now. So she's not here right now. Yes. She's writing the donation board. The donation board. Okay. So, yeah, VBS is coming up. And most of us that have been here for a while, there's the, 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 the board's up front. And you take off the card, right? And you can take that home. And then do they have to write their name down anywhere? On the card behind it. So you can leave that card up on the board so we know who took that to bring that in as well. So donation board in the back. Grab one. Bring in the stuff. Drop it off to the church so we're ready for VBS. All right? All right, let's bow our heads and we'll get started. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this day that uh, we can worship you. We thank you for the beautiful day that just shows proof of you and the creation that you created, Lord. We are created, and we thank you for that. We just thank you for you being the ultimate father, for having your son, Jesus Christ, sacrifice his life for us, Lord, so that we may, through faith and through accepting your son as our Messiah, will go to heaven. Again, thank you for this beautiful day. Bless those that have come through the door this morning, Lord. And may the Holy Spirit be here and working through Jason and his message. It's in his son's holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning there. Hi, everybody. Hi. What a blessed day. I went to my class reunion last night and lost my voice. So I'm not going to talk too. much. Yeah. So, let's stand up and get ready to praise the Lord. And in the meantime, let's see if anybody had a birthday. Does anyone have a birthday to celebrate? Anybody had one or got one coming up? Don't be bashful. Anybody? That didn't sound good. Was that you or me? Okay, now's the time when you silence your phones, please. If you must know, that was my son wishing me a happy Father's Day. That's good. <laughs> No birthdays, no, any anniversaries, anybody? And Aaron and Lucas, your, Aaron, your mother saying that yours is June 9th. And, <laughs> and you slipped by and didn't say a word. <laughs> Let's sing happy anniversary again, and then we can get ready to praise the Lord. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary. This next song, uh, Blessed Be Your Name, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. The last time we sang this, you almost uh, broke the windows out of this room. Amen. So. Street. 
Psalm 73, 25, and 26. Whom have I in heaven but you? I desire you more than anything on earth. My health may fail and my spirit may grow weak, but God remains the strength of my heart. He is mine forever.
morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, Abe and I were talking this morning of anniversaries, and um, today is Sydney's and Luke's anniversary. It's their first year, so uh, year number one. I, and I remember my father-in-law talking about, uh, about marriage, and, and he says, you know, the first 10 years are going to be the roughest. I said, 10 years? <laughs> really? The first 10 years? Can't it be like five, two, something like that? But no, he said the first 10. And so uh, we, we have not had any issues, have we? None whatsoever. <laughs> anyway, um, you all can sit down for now. We got, we're just going to change something up because it's Father's Day. And you guys, if you want, can go sit. Okay. For a few minutes before we... Uh, I, I do have a Father's Day video to show you and... Ladies, women, wives, if you are like my wife, who loves one well, Father's Day, like the best day of the year, <laughs> I don't know why anybody's laughing, but she, one of the things that she loves more than anything ever is our dad jokes. Anybody else just love dad jokes? And all the men's are like, all the dads are like, amen. The women are like, no, not a chance. Well, I promise this will be the last time I show a dad joke video on, well, I know, I know, but it, it, it is, <laughs> it, yeah, this year. What this, it is, I'll give it a preface of this video, it's um, dads, dad jokes in recovery. It's a recovery group for dads um, by telling jokes, so uh, please enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. Now, some of you have already let me know how uncomfortable you were in last week's meeting. So tonight, we're going to try to respect each other's boundaries. What? Tonight, we've also got a guest with us, David. And would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Um, hey, guys. I'm David. David. Hey, hey, David. Hey. How many kids do you have, David? None. At least not at the moment. Uh, my wife is pregnant, and uh, she should be delivering any day now. Mm, that's great. So Super. Oh, great. Awesome. So who would like to go first? Anyone. Anyone. I'll go. Perfect. Todd? Yes. My daughter and I went to the mall, and she said she wanted to take the stairs to the second level. And I said, I don't trust stairs because they're always up to something. <laughs> Todd, I'm sorry that happened. Okay. I encourage you to try to resist the urge to make jokes like that. My turn? Okay. Can I go? Okay. Yesterday, actually, my daughter got home and she asked me how my day was. And I said, well, a guy tried to sell me a coffin, but that's the last thing I need. Oh, Jerry, oh, Jerry that Jerry. joke was dead on arrival. Because it's the last thing I need. David, <laughs> how about you? Oh, I, I didn't, I didn't say this is a safe zone. Just jump on in. Yeah, I, I'm, I guess I'm just scared of being a dad. I'm afraid I'm gonna start telling bad jokes just like my dad. Well, it might be in our nature. We can fight against it. Hey, speaking of nature, I tried to catch some fog yesterday. I missed. <laughs> M-I-S-T. Oh, You're a monster. I, this is where the boundary is. I'm done. This is where you are. Hello? Really? Okay, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, I'll be right there. That was Julie. Her water just broke. I guess the baby finally ran out of womb. <laughs> I'm gonna be a dad. Don't you think it should be going? Oh, yeah.
So I told my wife she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> so I told my wife she drew her eyebrows too high. She seemed surprised. Oh, you know what I mean. I laugh way too hard at those, and I can't even get a smile cracked out of Jenny. She's like, I don't know why you think those are funny. Because they are funny. <laughs> Did you hear the roar of the crowd? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, with that, let's, let's go greet a dad, maybe with a good joke to him, or I don't know, something. Let's go greet one another.
can't see that. All right. We can find a spot, find your seat. We'll get going. All right, as everybody is finding their seat, just a couple <clears throat> of reminders. Is your tear-off sheet on the back? Uh, remember to put down your information and prayer requests and everything. And again, on the back is that online giving um, QR code. And there's been a few people that have taken advantage of that. Uh, so as you want to do that, that is a great way to... To give, an easy way to give, I mean, you could do it right from your chair right now if you wanted to. Um, so very, very easy. Uh, with that, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's pray for our offering and, and we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, just grateful for the opportunity to be in your house, worshiping with like-minded believers. Father, we pray today as we... Uh, um, have given, are going to give, Lord, we pray that we do this with a cheerful heart, knowing that, Lord, that you have given everything that we have, everything that we own has come from you. And, Lord, you, you ask just for a portion, a portion of it back. So, Lord, I ask that you convict us to give back uh, what is yours, uh, to help build your kingdom here at Grace Alive, and Lord, may it glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
All right, kids are taking off. <clears throat> As you know, we are <clears throat> spending a, the summer in the Psalms as we go through these, this wonderful uh, book of Psalms. Uh, there's many, five books actually that we read. That's, this is split up. We're going through sections and trying to get, this is <clears throat> probably one of the harder things to do, is trying to figure out in 12 weeks which Psalm I want to do, or what psalm the Lord leads me to in these different books uh, for the summer. And I already knew this one was going to be uh, one that we were going to do, and it's Psalm 22. And uh, I know we, Lisa was asking, we were talking back and forth, and she said, you going to do Psalm 23? I'm like, no, everybody knows Psm 23. We've broken it down before, and I'm like, not a lot of people know about Psalm 22. Uh, right beforehand, and what that psalm uh, is, and <clears throat> everything related around that. So we'll get to, into that in a minute, but <clears throat> as the psalms, we know our books is, is a collection of like, songs, and laments, and uh, prayers, and, but mainly these songs, and the title is Song Change, and you're going to understand what <clears throat> I mean by song change as we read through um, Psalm 22. But you ever get to, like say on a road trip, you're on a road trip and you get a song going and you're like, this song just really isn't what I need for eight hours. <laughs> this isn't the type of music I need. I need, I need to change a song. I need something a little more upbeat. So let's change songs. Let's change a song and get, get us up uh, that kind of fits what we need to, fits my mood. Well, this is exactly what David was, was how it was doing in this psalm, but you can see that through halfway through this psalm, David's song changes. It changes. When we look at the book, of, the, the book of Psalms, it's a book of prayers, it's a book of poetry that the Israelite people would pray, that they would pray together, and uh, some of the authors, as we know, are King David, or some, uh, the sons of Korah, and other uh, people that wrote the psalms. There's a lot of different psalms that we read uh, in throughout the 150 psalms that are in the book, but we can be praying these psalms. I don't know if you've ever done that, if you've ever thought about that, if that's ever, ever crossed your mind, but these psalms are psalms of prayers that we could uh, be praying and praying um, in so many different situations, there's a psalm for everything in our life that we, that we could be praying for, um, for every situation, no matter our circumstance, no matter what is going on, there is a psalm in here that we can be praying. And today we are looking at what is called a messianic psalm, a psalm that uh, is a prophetic psalm, is from the Messiah, or from the Messiah, it, pro, it uh, prophesies Jesus as being uh, <clears throat> the King, the Messianic, or the Messiah. As we go through here, King David wrote about it. He wrote about the Messiah. He wrote about the Messiah coming to rescue um, the people, especially the Israelite people, from their from their sins. And he wrote Psalm 22, get, a, at least about a thousand years before. Jesus was even born. Okay, so when, keep that in mind when we are reading through this. This was written a thousand years before the birth of Christ, and it tells about the suffering of Jesus. It tells about the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus. A thousand years before he was born. Okay, so this is amazing. This is how God works through his word, how he just weaves the Messiah, weaves his son through the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. And then he talks about his return and his rule. And as we read this, we're going to reference it and put it next to um, another book in the New Testament 
And that is Matthew 27. So one thing <clears throat> that happened here, let's read Psalm 22. And as we read this, I want you to think about, does this sound familiar somewhere? Where does this sound familiar and where have you heard this? So starting out in Psalm 22, verse 1, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Does that sound familiar? Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Far from my deliverance as the wor are the words of my groaning. Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but, <clears throat> but I have no rest. Yet you are holy. O oh, you who are enthroned upon the praises of Israel. In you our fathers trusted. They trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and, and, and were delivered. If, you, if in you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not a man. A reproach of men and despised by the people. All who see me sneer at me. They separate with the lip. They wag the head saying, Commit yourself to the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him because he delights in him. Yet you are he who brought me forth from the womb. You made me trust when upon my mother's breast. Upon you I was cast from birth. You have been my God from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bowls have surrounded me. Strong bowls of Bashan have encircled me. They open wide their mouth at me as a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted within me. My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws, and you lay me in the dust of death. For dogs have surrounded me, a band of evildoers has encompassed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look, they stare at me, they divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O oh Lord... Be not far off. O oh, you, my help, hasten to my assistance. Deliver my soul from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen. You answer me. Does this sound a little bit familiar? Okay, run over to Matthew 27. We're going to look at some of the <clears throat> comparisons of when Jesus was on the cross. When Jesus was on the cross, <clears throat> one thing I got to <clears throat> tell you is that Psalm 22 isn't necessarily, this isn't David explaining what his life and what, what has gone on and what he is facing at this point. To some degree, yes, he is uh, expressing some of the things that he's going through, anguish and, and being chased and, and all this stuff. But never do in the Psalms or anywhere do we see David going through this and being physically uh, beat on like, like he is like this. He is explaining, what is he explaining? He's explaining the crucifixion of Jesus. They didn't even know what crucifixion was at this time. And yet he's talking about where his hands being nailed and his feet being nailed. He's talking about, he's foretelling the prophesying about Jesus, the Messiah, being crucified on the cross for us. That's what he is explaining as he goes through this. So when we look at Matthew 27, I want to read uh, verses 35 through 44, and we'll break down this in just a minute. So Matthew 27, verse 35. And see if you can recall what we had just read in Psalm 22. And when they had crucified him, talking about Jesus, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. And sitting down, they began to keep watch over him there. 
And above his head they put up the charge against him, which, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At that time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. <clears throat> and those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now. If he delights in him, for he said, I am the Son of God. The robbers who had been crucified with him were also insulting him with the same words. Now from the sixth hour, darkness fell upon all of the land in the ninth hour. Does you sound familiar from what we just read in Psalm 22? See, I believe that when Jesus was on the cross, he was remembering and meditating because Jesus knew the Old Testament. He knew what was going on. He knew Psalm, and he knew Psalm 22. And he was reading, and he's meditating. He wasn't reading. He was meditating on the words of Psalm 22 as he was on the cross. It jumps back from the Messiah describing what is going on, and then he goes back to the Father. It's structured here as we look at being a prayer. Our, our first point is... Pray Psalm 22 with Jesus in mind. Pray Psalm 22 with Jesus in mind. And I told you we'd break this down and kind of go back and forth, so keep your, keep your, your hand there in Matthew and go back to Psalm 22. One of the first things, well, we first see, uh, one of the first things is, is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? We see this in verse 46 of Matthew, chapter 27. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? One of the first things he says. When we jump down to verse 7 in Psalm 22, and he says, All who sneer at me, all who see me, sneer at me. They separate with the lip, they wag the head, saying, Commit yourselves to the Lord, let him deliver him. We go back to Matthew chapter 27, verse 39. Those who were passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads. They were sneering at him, as, as Psalm 22 says, with their lips. Commit yourself to the Lord, they said, and he will deliver him. This is showing us in verse 43. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him. Jesus is, is, is walking through this, and he's seen this, and he's seen where he has to uh, fulfill the prophecy that is that back in Psalm 22. And then we go to Verse 18 in Psalm 22, they divided my garments among them. This is in verse 35 of Matthew 27. And when they had crucified him, they divided up his garments among themselves by casting lots. Jesus was remembering Psalm 22 as David prophesied this, our crucified Savior. And to think that Jesus was reciting Scripture, was meditating on the Scripture, was meditating on the Old Testament as He's hanging on the cross for you. He's reciting Scripture when He's suffering. So when we think about this psalm, when we think about 22, when we pray Psalm 22, we need to be doing it with Jesus in mind. Because when Jesus was on the cross, there are many times that we've talked about in Matthew 27 where he felt abandoned, where he was abandoned. 
So when we feel abandoned, we need to remember that, that of, of Christ's presence, that he is always there. Whether it be our loved ones, when we feel abandoned by our loved ones, whether we feel abandoned by our friends or family, or sometimes, I don't know about you, but maybe you even felt abandoned by God himself. Anybody want to admit that? I have. Whether you're sick, whether you're going through a divorce, whether you're going through loss of a loss of a loved one, you're feeling abandoned. Jesus is still present in our lives. Jesus is still there, just like Jesus chose to remember the Father's presence. You know, and it would be hard, but it's only if Jesus was on the cross and the Father turns away from him. He's like. Why, why, God, have you forsaken me? God couldn't be in the presence of sin when he hurled the sin of mankind onto his son. He had to look away, and he felt abandoned. But Jesus knew and was remembering his presence, the Father's presence. When we as a family, I remember going through some things way back when we first came to the church, that was just, we wanted to give up. I wanted to give up. And we were just not even six months to a year into the ministry here at Grace Alive. And we wanted to give up because we just kept thinking, what, God, if you love us, why would you do this? Why, you want me here. Why would you bring me through all of this? Why would you... Uh, we just felt abandoned by God like he, didn't, like he didn't care. But he called us to the ministry. He called us here to Grace Alive. And no matter what happened in our lives, no matter what was going on in our lives, we had to know that God had a purpose for all of this. Did I understand any of it? Absolutely not. I had no clue what was going on. I wanted to give up on God. I wanted to turn my back on God. I wanted to just say, you know, if this is the way ministry is going to be like, if this is the way it's going to be like to serve at a church, I, I don't want it. And God said, remember what I called you for. Remember what I called you for. I'm not going to abandon you in your deepest, darkest time. And Jesus felt the same way. Well, he was man, Right? He was human being, and you can imagine when the father turns his back, he's probably thinking to himself, at my most time that I need you the most, you're going to turn your back on me. But Jesus remembers what happens, and he remembers the verses that go on. He remembers what God said and promised. I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to. I'm going to remember you. This is the purpose that you have to fulfill for my glory. Thank you. Wow. And I had to remember that God is still good no matter what. He is still there providing for us. He is still there walking with us as he was with Jesus. He promised Jesus that he was going to bring him back. He was going to be the savior of the world. And then this little mishap, this little mishap, kind of a big mishap in the crucifixion happens. And he's thinking, where are you, God? Where are you? So when you feel abandoned, remember and pray about Christ's presence in your life. The next, uh, the next thing is when we are looked down upon for our faith, when we are looked down upon uh, for being a believer, we need to be reminded of who Jesus is and his faithfulness uh, to us. We need to remember that when we are rejected by others because of Christ, Christ again will remain faithful. I was talking to people this week uh, and last weekend, and we, again, we were talking about the building, and, and uh, then people were asking me about, you know, what, what do you got going on over there? What, what are you building? Um, I 
another building, <laughs> another church. We're building another church. Like, that, that is crazy. And I said, you are absolutely right. I told our building committee me, uh, team when we uh, sat down, I said, you realize people think we are absolutely nuts for building this other building, that we are crazy. <clears throat> and I think I actually heard a couple hallelujahs and amens because we are crazy because that's the kind of faith that we have. We know that God is in, in control. And I said, they said, how are you going to pay for this? And I said, well, you know, God provided the, the first half. We're not taking the loan. He's going to provide the second half. And they laughed. They just laughed out loud. And I'm standing there. I was like, well, God provided the first half. And then they realized I was serious. They're like, oh, he means it. That's the faith I have by God because he can do it. I mean, he's going to do it. He did it for us, and he's going to. And the thing is, that with us, what we got feeling in our lives, when we feel an abandon, that we've, people look down on us, we got to have that, remember that faith that God is there and he is faithful to remember us. He's not going to let us go. And as we see in, in Psalm chapter 22 and 12 through 18, we see that uh, when we do suffer, we need to remember what Christ suffered and how he was delivered for us on the cross. This is what David is, ex is explaining about the crucifixion. We need to remember that he is going to deliver, be delivered, and he suffered for us. When we suffer, we can be, we're in good company because Jesus suffered for us. When Jesus cried out, my God, my God, guess what? He knew his own death was coming. He knew he was going to die. But he believed that verse 18 was going to come. Check out Psalm 22, verse 18 again. And they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. You remember that that was going to come, but he was still meditating on his own deliverance. And he says, but you, O Lord, be not far off. O you, my help, as Hasten to my assistance. Deliver my soul from the sword. He knew that it was coming. Deliver my soul from the sword, my only life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of the wild oxen. You will answer me. He knew that, these, that this was coming. So let's go on and let's... let's, let's uh, Keep on walking through Psalm 22 because now we have the song change. Now we have the change. We have kind of this sad uh, conversation here that we have that David is explaining of what, the, what Christ is going through, what he's going to go through. And then we read and we start, we see this song change happen first in 19 um, through 21, but now we see it. And in verse 22, and then David says this, I will tell of your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. All of you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him for help, he heard. From you comes my praise in, my, in the great assembly. I shall pay my vows before those who fear him. The afflicted will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him will praise the Lord. Let your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will worship before you. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the prosperous of the earth will eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust will bow before him, even he who cannot keep his soul alive. Posterity will serve him. I will be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They will come and will declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has performed it, or he has done it. It is finished. 
we read this, and the resurrection of Jesus didn't stop with Jesus. It's given to all of us. So when we think about this prayer, when, when we break it down and we break out the praise that happens, Jesus prayed Psalm 22 with who in mind? On the cross. Us. He prayed Psalm 22 on the cross with you in mind. Isn't, isn't that mind-blowing? That in his biggest time of need, in his biggest time of anguish, in the biggest time where he felt maybe betrayed by the Father, he prayed with you and was on the, on the cross with you in mind. Oh, my goodness. He prayed Psalm 22 with me in mind. In spite of of who I am, in spite of what I'm going to do, he still did it for us. We can see kind of this echoed out too in the book of John in chapter 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. Without he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We read this in, in verse, thir verse 31 of Psalm 22. It is done to a people who will be born that he has performed it, or he has done it. He has done it. But let's finish with the future. So we see the, the anguish, we see the um, what happened to Jesus as he was being persecuted, as he was going, as he was on the, upon the cross being ridiculed and spit upon and, 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 and mocked. Then we see the praises of, of the resurrection of Jesus. But in verses 27 through 30, we see, we see beyond the fact when Jesus comes back for his people, the second coming, we see this happen and I'm reminded of Scripture because when we look at this, verse 27, I just want to read this again, verses 27 through 30 of Psalm 22. It says, For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. Those of you that have been with us in the book uh, in, in Bible Hour, we've been going through Revelation, and we've been reading how the nations are going to bow down um, to, to Christ as he comes back. And the, all the families of the nations will worship before you, for the kingdom is the Lord's. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. All the uh, prosperous of the earth will eat and worship. All those who go down to the dust will bow before him, even he who cannot keep his soul alive. Posterity will serve him. It will be told of the Lord to the coming generation. They will come and will declare his righteousness to a people who will be born that he has performed it. And I'm reminded of how this is also prophesied in the book of Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Talking about Jesus, he says, Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant, and being made in the likeness of men. Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And this is where we see the coming, where, where we see this prophesied. We see it in the, uh, in the end times, in the tribulation. We see where all nations are going to bow down to him. For this reason also God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow 
of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen? Amen. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess. That says every. It doesn't say the believers that this is going to happen. It doesn't say just the believers, those that believe in Christ, that have gave their life to Christ, that are now in heaven. He said, no, every knee will bow. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Can you imagine that? Okay, think about the loved ones that you have, or friends that aren't believers, that have no idea, that don't want anything to do with Jesus. Can you imagine them bowing down and confessing Jesus as Lord? It should make you weep thinking about the fact of that happening. But this is what happens. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So when we read these psalms, think of Jesus. Because Jesus is woven throughout the entire scriptures and especially through the psalms. We read Jesus in, in, in so many different places. But what I want you to do today is I want you to remember is as you pray and pray through Psalm 22 with the Savior in mind. Pray through Psalm 22 with Jesus in mind because Jesus prayed Psalm 22 with you in mind. That should give you great motivation to be praying with him in mind. So my takeaway, my question for you today, um, it's the first question, is do you need a change of song in your life? Is there a shift, is there a change of song that you need to maybe switch the radio because maybe, maybe you're going down a path of self-pity, maybe you're going down this path, wow, I just can't handle this. Man, get in the Word and switch the channel, switch the song, switch the song to the song of praise. And, and, and praying to Jesus, praying to him. Because I have this question, do you, need a song, do you need a change of songs in your life? And how we do this is listen to the song of Jesus as he played it out for you on the cross. As we remember that song. I should say listen and remember the song of Jesus as he played it out for you on the cross. So I pray you have a song change this week. Pray you pray for somebody else, a family member, to have a song change in their life this week. And guess what? You could be the one picking up the needle and setting it down. Oh, those are records. Anybody know what a you know what a record is? A record player? Okay. You have wow, yeah. Good job, yeah. Okay, so you may be the one picking up the needle and setting it on that right song. Just perfect. That Christ will need you to, to, to hear this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you that you are a God that, that cares for us. You sent your son Jesus to die for us. And Lord, that as he was going through crazy pain, as he was going through indescribable things that were being done to him, said to him, lied about him, he still had us on his mind. God, I pray today that if there is one here that that needs to know you. That needs to be reminded of what Jesus did for them on the cross. Lord, I pray that they come to you today and confess and repent of their sin, of, of their wrong against you. If you're here this morning and you need to do that, you have never repented 
of your sins and said, God, I am sorry. I repent of these sins. I want to live for you. If you've never done that, and today is the first day, I just ask that you just slip your hand up quietly. Nobody looking around. We can pray for you, pray for your new life in Christ. But if you are here today and you are a believer, and maybe you just need a song change. Maybe you just need a song change today. And you need to get out of the funk of living for yourself and start living for Christ with that new song of praise. I'm praying for you today. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Have the team come up and close us in worship. And as we think about, as we sing uh, this last song, uh, when we come to Christ and we repent of our sin, our, our, our past is gone, uh, the old is gone, a new is come, and what Jesus sees as us, when he looks at us, he sees us as flawless because we come to him knowing and believing what he did for us on the cross. So please stand with us as we close in worship. There's got to be more than going back and forth from doing right to doing wrong because we were taught that's who we are. Come on, get in line right behind me. You along with everybody.
and that is what the cross has done. And no matter what has happened in the past, no matter what you've gone through, you know, the bumps, the bruises, the scars, everything in your past, the cross has made you flawless. And for that, we can say amen. amen. Don't forget, um, we have the special gift for your fathers on the way out. Um, try to control yourself when you walk out um, that you, don't worry about it, just do it. Just go out. You'll know what I mean when we get out there. Uh, so, Father, we thank you so much for being the ultimate father in our lives. God, we, we know that as fathers, we can fail. We've been failed too, but also we've been loved. And no matter what has happened, we have you, Lord. We have you, Father, that is wrapping your arms around us. You never leave us. You never forsake us. I thank you so much for that. Lord, bless us as we leave here. Um, Lord, we ask for a blessing on our fathers. And Lord, we pray that they are allowed to do whatever they want today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.